Hello, everyone. I'm so excited to be with all of you today, and it looks like we have a lot of different people here today. However, I'm willing to bet that each and every one of us has this one thing in common, that every one of us, at some point today, have all used water. Whether it be drinking water, making our coffee, taking a shower, flushing the toilet, and then hopefully washing our hands, water is such an important part of our daily lives. We don't even think about it. It just comes naturally. We get thirsty, so of course we take a drink of water. But what if simply taking that sip of water could risk your life? That if simply drinking water could kill you? You see, this is the case for many people around the world today. About one in nine people worldwide do not have access to any sort of clean water. Water, the very substance that is supposed to be sustaining their lives, becomes the very substance that ends it. You see, the lack of clean water is one of the most pressing issues of the 21st century today. The United Nations estimates that 45% of our world today lives in some sort of area of water shortage, whether that be due to their physical location or economic reasons. And then another 7% of our world today is approaching some sort of water shortage, which means in the near future, over half of our world will be living in an area of water scarcity. Now, there are many different types of water conservation technologies that exist today that are trying to address this issue. We have things like rainwater catchment, groundwater collection, desalinization, reclaimed water, and then there's fog harvesting. But even with all of these technologies that exist today, there's still a shortage of water. So what can we do to fix this? First, let's talk a little bit about fog harvesting. Fog harvesting is a type of water collection, but almost nobody has heard about it. And what it is, it's a form of biomimicry which means that scientists have taken what nature already does and have implemented it for human use. For example, there's a beetle that lives in the desert where water is not widely available. So what it does to get water, it sticks its head toward the ground and it's back in the air and its back has a unique pattern of bumps on it so that when fog passes by the beetle, small droplets of water accumulate on the beetle's back. And over time, the droplets of water will drip down into the beetle's mouth below. And there are similar plants that do the same thing as well. They have a unique pattern of branches and leaves so that when dew or fog passes by them, the droplets will accumulate on their leaves and then drip down into the roots below. So fog harvesting is basically the same idea. You have a net that stands perpendicular to the flow of fog. As fog passes through the fog net, small droplets of water will accumulate on the net. And over time, they gather weight, and when they get heavy enough, they will drip down below and do some sort of collection bin. And what's so great about this technology is that many studies have found that the water collected from fog harvesting is suitable to be used as drinking water because the fog is purified by natural sunlight. Fog harvesting is also a very easy technology to maintain. It requires no input of energy. It just utilizes the conditions of the surrounding environment and gravity. But even with this, fog harvesting is not widely implemented today. Originally, this was because it was believed to be inefficient. However, this is no longer true. For example, a recent study in Chile showed that they were able to collect 12 liters of water for every cubic meter of fog mesh each day. Another problem though, is that the fog mesh itself is very hard to come across. Even if you have the money to buy the mesh, it is almost impossible to find a place to buy it from. So if great technology exists, but no one can afford it, or people don't have access to it, then what good is it? So my goal is to take fog harvesting and make it more affordable and more easily accessible to increase the implementation of this technology throughout the world. So polyethylene tetraphthalate, also known as PET, is the material used to make most fog mesh today. 
PET also happens to be a plastic, which is used to make most of our plastic bottles and our plastic bags today. And you know, it seems like no matter where you go in the world, you can always find trash. We have such a problem today trying to find ways to reduce our waste and recycle plastic. It's actually estimated that enough plastic is thrown away each year to circle the earth four times. And out of the plastic that we produce each year, only about 5% of it is recovered, while billions of pounds of plastic ends up in our oceans. So what I did is I designed a fog harvesting mesh using recycled PET from plastic bottles and plastic bags. To do this, I first created a string from plastic bottles and plastic bags. I got this idea from watching a video of a Russian man who created a plastic bottle cutting device. And I kind of used this idea to be able to create a very thin fishing line like string for plastic bottles. And to give you an idea of how this works, you can kind of see it here. It's basically a very sharp blade that is cutting the plastic bottle into very thin strips. So you have this very sharp blade and the plastic bottle is fed through a very small hole. And that hole dictates the size of the string that you're going to get out of it. And it's really easy to do. All you really need is a sharp blade. You could even use scissors if you're patient enough. And then to do this with plastic bags is a little bit easier. All you have to do is cut the bags into thin strips. And then you take the strips and you twist them into a very thin like rope. So taking this string that I created from the bags and the bottles, I wove them into different fog harvesting mesh designs. So I came up with three different designs. The first one you see is a fog harvesting mesh that's created from a thick version of plastic bottles. The second design is also made from plastic bottles, however, it's much thinner than the first design. And the last one is a fog harvesting mesh using recycled target bags. And then I also have a standard fog harvesting mesh, which was donated from Fog Quest, which is a nonprofit fog harvesting corporation. And I use this as my standard control mesh to test my designs against. So to test my designs, what I did is I tested them in a humidity chamber where the temperature and the humidity are held constant, and then ultrasonic humidifiers are used to simulate fog, as they produce a very microscopic droplet size of water that's very similar to that of fog. And after keeping the designs in the humidity chamber for various periods of time, I measured how much water they were able to collect and compared that to the standard fog harvesting mesh. And after keeping them in that humidity chamber, you can actually see the, water of the droplets of water accumulate on the mesh. And you see an example of this here, and that's the thin version of the plastic bottle mesh. You see the water droplet that's almost getting heavy enough and getting ready to drip down below, which is a very similar behavior as you see in this picture here, which is the mesh created from the plastic target bag. Now to give you an idea of what this water collection looks like, I have a high speed video of the water collection on a standard fog harvesting mesh. So you can see that the water just basically gets stuck on the mesh and then drips down below. And there's a very similar behavior when you look at the recycled plastic meshes. And you see that here. So after comparing these designs, I actually found that recycled plastic compared very similarly to a standard fog harvesting mesh. Actually, the thin plastic bottle mesh performed an average of 4% better than a standard fog harvesting mesh. Even the two other designs performed very similarly. Statistically, they showed no significant difference from a standard fog harvesting mesh, which means that recycled plastic can be used as a cheaper and sustainable replacement to standard fog harvesting meshes. The capability to use recycled plastic for fog harvesting reduces the cost of this technology, but more importantly, it increases the availability of the technology. My goal was to make this so easy that anyone can use it. You could even make it in your backyard if you wanted to. I think people sometimes think that it's gonna be one great person with one big idea that's going to change the world and solve all the world's problems. 
But in reality, it's all of the little things that each and every one of us does that make the difference to change the world. So why don't we reduce our waste and help provide clean water to areas of water scarcity throughout the world? Thank you.